Developing tonight, a murder investigation is underway after police find a woman's body on the street with several stab wounds. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Krista Bame. Police found a Redby, Minnesota woman stabbed multiple times lying on a street in Bemidji. 35-year-old Krista Fisherman was lying near the 2800 block of Ridgeway Avenue in Bemidji just after 7 last night. Emergency crews worked to try and stop the bleeding and they continued while she was transported to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. No one has been arrested in connection to her murder. Police say Fisherman has a long criminal record that includes numerous arrests for theft and prostitution. And we'll be following this story and we'll bring any updates on our Facebook page. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. An internet sting lands another man in jail tonight for trying to buy sex. Grand Forks police arrested the ninth man in connection to an online ad on Backpage.com. Grand Forks police say 25-year-old Jordan Ledoon responded to an ad to engage in sex. It's a follow-up to a sting operation that landed eight men in jail Thursday. Ledoon faces human trafficking charges involving a minor and will appear in court on Tuesday. Police are continuing to follow up on leads after 30 to 40 people responded to the ad online. A traffic stop led to one of the biggest meth busts in North Dakota history, where police found 11 pounds of meth and more than $20,000. The Berthold police chief pulled over a car with no license plates along Highway 2 on Wednesday. He found one pound of meth and $20,000 in the car after he noticed drug-related behavior. Oscar Delgado of Phoenix, Rocky Mayfield of Goodyear, Arizona, and Tina Ganley of Williston were all arrested. After being interviewed by the Ward County Drug Task Force, a search warrant was issued for the Days Inn in Minot, where police found 10 more pounds of meth, marijuana, $900 in cash, and a handgun. All three are being charged with Class AA felonies for possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver methamphetamine, a maximum sentence of life in prison. Hopefully you're staying inside nice and warm this Valentine's Day because heading outside may not be the best idea for a date. Let's go to meteorologist Lisa Green now to see just how cold it is out there. Lisa? Good night to snuggle up. We've got temperatures that are very chilly, but not as bad as this morning. Here's a look at our morning lows. 11 below in Fargo, 13 below in Grand Forks, and 17 below in Roseau, Bedette, and Devils Lake. And when you factor in that wind, wind chills were down into the 30s, even 40 below earlier today. Here's a look at our current temperatures. We're at 4 below right now in Fargo and 7 below in Grand Forks. Believe it or not, temperatures have been slowly rising today, even though none of us, or most of us, I should say, made it to zero today. So very cold out there uh, once again tonight. And in addition to that, we've got snow on the way. It's starting to push into the James River Valley and the Devil's Lake Basin right now. And as we look through the evening hours tonight, first we'll notice those temperatures slowly rising through the overnight hours. And by tomorrow morning, We'll start off the day above zero, but in addition to that, we've got some snow to contend with. So we'll be talking about that here in your hour by hour forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Lisa. And bundle up if you do prepare to go out, and you're going to have to wait. If you're getting ready for a special dinner date tonight, if you're looking for a last minute table, you may be out of luck. We called around to many restaurants in the valley, and they say expect up to a two hour wait in line for you and your Valentine. Valley News Team's Christina Craig joins us. Live from Mezzaluna, Christina, how's it going out there tonight? Hey, Krista, the doors opened here around 4, and that's when the line started, but that doesn't seem to bother many Valentine couples. Many say sharing a special meal is well worth the wait. And while some eateries don't accept reservations, but more or less serve on a first-come, first-served basis, Mezzaluna says they've been booked a month prior to tonight. For tonight, it's going to be really busy. Restaurant managers are bracing themselves for the Valentine's Day dinner rush. Had people here in our meat room in our prep area since 7 o'clock getting ready for today. You know, they're peeling potatoes or cutting down the meat. All to help create a memorable evening with special pricing menus for two. And to prepare for the crowds, managers are staffing additional servers. We have a ton of people on. You know, we're trying to get that food in and cook as fast as we can. Today will be our, our second busiest day of the year besides Mother's Day. So we're looking at, you know, 90, 90 minute waits up to two hours. 
Other eateries we called, like Mezzaluna's, say their tables are completely booked and have been for more than a month. Even though we have been booked up and that all the reservations are taken, we're definitely still accepting walk-ins. And most restaurants are too. In fact, if you're heading to Texas Roadhouse and call an hour ahead, they'll put your name on the list. Somebody is coming here on a whim, hoping mm -hmm. to get in. Are they going to get a table? It is possible. It's very well possible. We always try to do the best we can any day. And right now, the wait time here for a table is about 15 minutes. And I've called around, and some other places have already exceeded that 90 minute wait time. And if you're looking to avoid the rush, it's best to call ahead. In Fargo, I'm Christina Craig. Krista, back to you. Thank you so much, Christina. Facebook is now letting you post after you're gone. You can now assign a friend or family member to be a legacy contact. Basically, they would take over your profile when you die. The word remembering would appear before the person's name, and this new feature allows the legacy contact to update and post to the profile. It's meant to allow others to share funeral arrangements. But for grieving family members, some disagree with the new feature. The funeral arrangement's a nice way to do it, to help people understand that the person has passed away. But my else reaction is people could abuse that pretty quickly by, you know, using that and faking that the person is still alive by not, you know, announcing right away that the person has passed away. And some say taking down a memorialized profile is a bit of a challenge. You would need to request Facebook to take the page down. A hands-on experience aims to help save a life at the West Acres Mall. The FM Ambulance paired up with the Fargo Fire Department for the second annual Save a Life event. And the team was stationed in front of Macy's teaching and showing mall goers how to perform hands-only CPR. 40% of cardiac arrest victims nationwide receive CPR help from a bystander. However, that number is much lower in Cass and Clay counties with only 33%. For as being as friendly as we are in the Midwest, we don't have a lot of bystanders that will do stop and do CPR for someone that has gone down in arrest. And so CPR and compressions are the best way to improve their chances of survival. And so we want everyone to learn how to just do compressions and how easy it can be to help save that life. This year, paramedics have taught more than 800 people hands-only CPR. Well, later on Valley News Live at 6, a perfect story for your Valentine's Day. 73 years of love and how it all started with spitballs.